فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم We are in the explanation of the kitab At-Tibyan fi Adab Hamalat Al-Qur'an written by Al-Imam Al-Allama Al-Mujtahid Muhyiddin Abi Zakaria Yahya ibn Sharaf Al-Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala We reach the chapter where the author says fi tafdil al-qira'ati fi al-mushaf Qira'ati al-Qur'an fi al-mushaf afdal min al-qira'ati ala dhahr al-qalb li'anna al-nadhar fi al-mushaf ibadat al-matlubah فتجتمع القراءة والنظر هكذا قاله القاضي حسين من أصحابنا وأبو حامد الغزالي وجماعات من السلف ونقل الغزالي في الإحياء أن كثيرا من الصحابة رضي الله عنهم كانوا يقرؤون في المصحف ويكرهون أن يخرج يوم ويكرهون أن يخرج يوم ولا ينظرون في المصحف وروى ابن أبي داود القراءة في المصحف عن كثيرين من السلف ولم أر فيه خلافا ولو قيل إنه يختلف باختلاف الأشخاص فتختار القراءة في المصحف لمن استوى لمن استوى خشوعه وتدبره في حالتي القراءة في المصحف وعن ظهر القلب وتختار القراءة وتختار القراءة عن ظهر القلب لمن يكمل لمن يكمل بذلك خشوعه وتدبره ويزيد على خشوعه وتدبره لو قرأ من المصحف لكان هذا قولا حسنا والظاهر أن كلام السلف وفعلهم محمول على هذا التفضيل سكشن. Reciting the Quran from the Mus'haf is better than reciting it by heart because looking at the Mus'haf is a required act of worship that brings both the reward of reading and reciting. The author now talks about a matter called the virtue of reading from the Mus'haf. He says, Qira'atul Qur'ani, reading the Quran fil Mus'hafi in the Mus'haf, from the Mus'haf. أفضل it is better من القراءة من القراءة على ظهر القلب to to read it from your from the top of your heart from mind and memory it is better to read it from the مصحف why لأن النظر في المصحف because looking at the مصحف is عبادة مطلوبة it's an عبادة that itself is requested I mean it's wanted the شريعة actually wants that عبادة you see فتجتمع القراءة والنظر the person is actually combining between two things reading the Quran and actually looking at the Quran and there's two virtues in it and the author says هكذا قاله القاضي حسين من أصحابنا وأبو حامد الغزالي وجماعات من السلفي this is the opinion of قاضي حسين قاضي حسين is a shafi'i نعم one of our companions, Imam Abu Hamid, Hamid Al-Ghazali. Abu Hamid Al-Ghazali is also a Shafi'i. And the group of scholars among the pious predecessors. So the Salaf also used to do this. And he's going to mention that the Salaf that did it, you can find it in the book Ibn Abi Dawood's Kitab Al-Mushaf. Every time you transmit from Ibn Abi Dawood, you always need to know it's from the Kitab Al-Mushaf, right? Naam. Imam Al-Ghazali mentioned in his book Al-Ihya that many of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite from the Mus'haf and disliked leaving the house without reading from the Mus'haf. Ibn Abi Dawood has narrated much to show that the pious predecessors would recite from the Mus'haf or recommend that. And I have not come across any disagreement with regards to this issue. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud used to say Adimu al-Nadara fil Mus'hafi be consistent in looking at the Mus'haf. Adimu, ay make it da'im. Make it the norms. What? An nadaru fil Mus'haf, in looking at the Mus'haf. So even if you're a hafiz, and you've memorized the Quran, it's also needed for you to look at the Mus'haf. You know why it's good? 
because there's another thing which the author didn't mention here which is that you will also learn the way that the Quran is written Rasmul Mus'haf the Ras and then the way the Quran writes is also something that's going to stick to your head because the Rasmul Mus'haf is something that no one can change you can't change it it has to be like that so no it, it might be said that preference in this matter is based on individual inclinations. For instance, if so now he talks about the issue: is it, is that is is it unrestrictedly virtuous for the person to look at the mushaf, or is it not? The Sheikh Rahimahullah says, "Walau qila if it if it said hypothetically, inna hu yaxtalifu bi xtilaf al ashqas that it differs from person to person." Huh? For instance, if the reciter finds that he is able to humble himself and contemplate the Qur'an by reading from the Mus'haf and by reciting from memory, then preference should be given to reciting from the Mus'haf for the added reward that it brings. So if the person says, when I read the Qur'an from the Mus'haf and when I also read it from, the, from memory, both times my memory, uh, both times my khushu' is there, both times my khushu' is there, then we'll say to him, I read from the Mus'haf then. Because it really combines between the two. You're reading it and you're also looking at the Mus'haf. So that person, it's chosen for him to read from the Mus'haf. But if one finds that he is better able to humble himself and contemplate the Qur'an by reciting it from memory, then preference should be given to that. So if the person says that when I read the Qur'an from memory, my khushu' is stronger, uh, my tadabbur is stronger, then what is said to him is that read from memory then because the asal of the Quran is that the person ponders on it Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayati that the Quran was sent down so you may <coughs> so you may ponder on it so if the person is going to attain pondering by reading from memory then virtue is given to reading from memory Naam. Likewise, if the reciter finds that humility and contemplation are better achieved through reading from the Mus'haf itself, then that is exactly what should be done. If the person says, no, actually reading from the Mus'haf alone is the only thing that I can find khushu' in, they'll say, read from the Mus'haf. Naam. It would appear that the statements of the predecessors regarding this issue are to be understood in the manner we have just detailed. So he says that the Salaf those who were for the Qur'an being read, read from the memory and those who were saying no, no, it should be read from the Mus'haf this is the way to reconcile between their views and this is what they meant by it each one was talking about that if the person, if it's the person is reading from the Mus'haf and the khushu' and the pondering is there then they should do that and if they find that they, are, they gain more khushu' and more pondering from reading from memory then they should do that Now. فصل في استحباب قراءة الجماعة مجتمعين وفضل القارئين من الجماعة والسامعين وبيان فضله وبيان فضيلة من جمعهم عليها وحرضهم وندبهم إليها اعلم أن قراءة الجماعة مجتمعين مستحبة بالدلائل الظاهرة وأفعال السلف والخلف متظاهرة فقد صح عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من رواية أبي هريرة وأبي سعيد الخضري رضي الله تعالى عنهما أنه قال ما من قوم يذكرون الله تعالى إلا حفتهم الملائكة وغشيتهم الرحمة ونزلت عليهم السكينة وذكرهم الله في من عنده قال الترمذي حديث حسن صحيح وعن ابي هريره رضي الله تعالى عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما اجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله تعالى يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه بينهم الا نزلت عليهم السكينه وغشيتهم الرحمه وحفتهم الملائكه وذكرهم الله في من عنده رواه مسلم وابو داود بإسناد صحيح على شرط البخاري ومسلم 
وعن معاوية رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خرج على حلقة خرج على حلقة من أصحابه فقال ما يجلسكم فقالوا جلسنا نذكر الله تعالى ونحمده لما هدانا للإسلام ومن علينا به فقال أتانا أتاني جبريل أتاني جبريل صلى الله عليه وسلم فأخبرني أن الله تعالى يباب أن الله تعالى يباهي بكم الملائكة رواه الترمذي رواه مسلم والترمذي والنسائي وقال الترمذي حديث حسن والأحاديث في هذا كثيرة وروى الدارمي بإسناده عن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنه ما قال من استمع إلى آية من كتاب الله تعالى كانت له نورا وروى ابن أبو داود أن أبا درداء رضي الله عنه كان يدرس القرآن مع نفر يقرؤون جميعا وروى ابن أبي داود فضل الدراسة مجتمعين عن جماعات من أفاضل السلف والخلف وقضاة المتقدم وعن حسان بن عطية والأوزاعي عنهما قال أول من أحدث الدراسة في مسجد دمشق هشام بن إسماعيل في قدمته على عبد الملك بن مروان وأما, رو وأما ما روى ابن أبي داود عن ضحاك عن ضحاك بن عبد الرحمن بن عز ابن عرز بن أنه أنكر هذه الدراسة وقال ما رأيت ولا سمعت وقد, وقد أدركت أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعني ما رأيت أحدا فعلها وعن ابن وهب قال قلت لمالك أرأيت القوم يجتمعون فيقرؤون جميعا صورة واحدة حتى يختموها فأنكر ذلك وعابه وقال ليس هكذا كان يصنع الناس إنما كان يقرأ الرجل على الآخر يعرضه فهذا الإنكار منهما مخالف لما عليه السلف والخلف ولما يقتضيه الدليل فهو متروك والاعتماد على ما تقدم من استحبابها لكن للقراءة في حال الاجتماع شروط قدمناها ينبغي أن يعتنى بها والله أعلم وأما فضيلة من يجمعهم على القراءة ففيها نصوص كثيرة كقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدال على الخير كفاعل وقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم لأن يهدي الله بك رجلا واحدا ولأن يهدي الله بك رجلا خير لك من حمر النعم والأحاديث في كثيرة وقد قال الله عز وجل وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان ولا شك في عظم أجر الساعي في ذلك فصل في الإدارة بالقرآن وهي أن يجتمع جماعة يقرأ بعضهم عشرا أو جزءا أو غير ذلك ثم يسكت ويقرأ الآخر من حيث انتهى الأول ثم يقرأ الآخر وهذا جائز حسن وقد سئل مالك رضي الله عنه عن ذلك فقال لا بأس به Those who listen to them and those who gather the people and encourage them to recite it together is as follows. The author, rahimahullah, now he goes into Al Imam Al Nawawi, rahimahullah, he talks about a topic called the congregational recitation of the Quran. And we're going to speak about it in more details. There's going to be something that Al Imam Nawawi is going to talk about that's commonly done by the Somalis. Somalis do it. And they call it Subah. They call it subah. They go into a circle, huh? which everybody takes a verse. I come and I read a verse, you read a verse, you read a verse, you read a verse, you read a verse. Is it permissible? Are you allowed to do that? I am Muhammad. Are you allowed to do that? Why is it? Because you do it every Saturday. MashaAllah, Muhammad and the brothers, they come here every Saturday and they finish the whole Quran. 
in circle, Muhammad Hafid. So they go in circle and they read each ayah and they finish the Quran together. So are you saying it because you do it? Are you saying it because you do it or because it's permissible? Yeah? <laughs> okay, that's what you heard it now. <laughs> so we're now going to talk about that, inshallah ta'ala. Is it permissible? And what's the evidence for it? Now. Based on clear evidence as well as the actions of the pious predecessors and those who came after them, reciting while gathering groups is recommended. So here in Imam Nawi it says that and Naqiraat al Jama'a, that reading together, Mujtami'ina as a whole, is mustahabba. It's actually recommended. Uh, based on what? Biddala'il al Zahira, apparent evidences. Wa al Salafi, and the doing of the pious predecessors. The action of the Salaf. Wal Khalafi, and the latecomers. Al Mutawahira. So what you find here is that the af'al of the Salaf, the action of the Salaf, is a form of evidence as well. We use that. Naam. Both Abu Huraira and uh, Abu Sa'id al Khudri, may Allah be pleased with them, reported that the Prophet said, There isn't a group of people who come together for the purpose of Allah's dhikr. So here, pay attention to this hadith. This hadith, Al Imam uh, Muslim and Bukhari both narrated it. Fi Sahihaihima. Naam. La, Tirmidhi narrated this. Muslim narrated it, like Tirmidhi, Bukhari didn't narrate it. Which is that the Prophet وسلم, he said, Ma min qawmin yadkuruna Allah Ta'ala. There is not a group of people who come together to remember Allah. So we will fall under that. I ask Allah, He makes us from those who He's who are remembering Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that He writes us with all of these rewards. Ayah? There isn't a group of people who come together for the purpose of Allah's dhikr, reciting while gathering groups is recommended. Mercy and angels circle them. Illa haffatum al malaika. The angels come down and they go around them, circle them. Are you? Mercy and shrouds them. Allah's mercy, it shrouds them, it covers us. Naam. Tranquility descends upon them. Tra peace and tranquility. Your heart is going to be in a state of joy and happiness when you're in a hal hilaq, the circles of ilm and the circles of knowledge. Your heart is going to feel it. That's when the heart dies. Our man kana maitan. فَحِيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ كَمَنْ مَثَلُوا فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ لَيْسَ بِخَارِجٍ مِنْهَا The one who's going to die, whose heart is dead, is the one who's what? The one whose heart dies is the one who, who leaves these kind of circles. لذلك the Messenger said, إِنَّ الذِّئْبَ يَأْكُلُ الْغَلَمُ الْقَاسِ إِنَّ الذِّئْبَ يَأْكُلُ الْغَلَمُ الْقَاسِ That the wolf eats the lowly sheep. But you guys must watch the Discovery Channel, sah? Wild animals. When the lion wants to catch someone, when animals, what he tries to do is he tries to take it out from the crowd. It has to, you know, those, especially the big black bulldogs. Not bulldogs, so it's not dog. Uh, buffaloes, the buffaloes, buffaloes. When he wants to take the buffalo, it, what does it have to do? It has to destroy the unity that they're with, with each other. And the fact that they're together. So when it, one goes off, that's it, he's finished. It's his day is over. His hour has striked. That's it, he's, got, he's caught now. He's going to push him, push him away, away, and that's it, he's going to eat it. So the person who, and walidalika, wallahi, if you see that you become in distance from the khayr that are happening in the masajids and places like that, you now need to know that the first step of your deviation is taking place. That's when you ask yourself, oh, what's, whoa, what's happening to me right now? Where is it going wrong? I have re recently haven't been to these kind of halakas, I haven't been to these kind of circles where Allah has been remembered. I'm not hanging around with those type of people who are going to take me to those places. That's the first step. And I, I look at this. People who stop practicing, what do they say to you? Oh, I can't go to the masjid, I'm going to be judged. I'm getting judged. People in the masjid are looking at me differently. I don't find that, you know, shaitan. He's pushing them away from the masjid. To keep them, to keep them on what? On every evil. Then it's then after he's taking you away from the masjid and he's taking you from the Muslims and he's taking you from the community. One sheikh I remember one time he said, "Teaching benefits us, then he benefits more than those who we teach." Being an imam of a masjid, I'm being in a masjid, I'm teaching from the masjid, or just being in a masjid and uh, doing khutabs 
it benefits the person who's doing it more than it benefits. I'm, I'm protecting my religion. More before I save others, and before I protect them, this environment, brother, nobody saved from it. La da'i wa la mad'u. The one who's calling and the one who's being called, both of them are scared. So if you don't connect your heart to the places of khayr and circles of knowledge, you're going to get eaten alive here, right? Yeah? Kun di' ban la ya'kulu ka di'ab, sah? Sah gulad. Kun di' ban la ya'kulu ka di'ab. You have to be a wolf in this kind of environment. So the wolves don't eat you. But if you allow yourself to be a victim and just run around and say, yeah, yeah I can face all the problems that are out there, that's a problem. That's truly a big problem. And that's what's happening in environments like this. People are going to universities, people are going to institutional places studying, and what's happening? They feel like they're taking, they can take on everything. They can take on everything themselves. And so what happens, bimurur is zaman, as time goes on. Those who live in universities, who leave their parents, and they go to other places. Are you with me, brothers? Illa man rahim rabbi, who live in universities. They don't last for too long. They live in dormitories. You see? So, the person starts to see himself talking like them, acting like them, being like them. You see, الطيور على أشكالها تقع. You then start befriending these people and you start your, your body language, your gestures. And the way you move your hands becomes like them. So that's why it's important, brothers, to be connected to what? To be connected to the masajid and the place. <coughs> Even those who go extreme, صح? Even those who become extremists, as they say, you know, who feel like they need to rob the kuffar, bomb the streets, kill everybody. Well, do they get it from the masajid? They don't get it from circles of knowledge and hilak with dhikr. Where do they get it from? Internet. So, shaitan takes you away. And as the Salaf used to say, shaitan sniffs a person's heart. It sniffs you. So he looks at you, what type of person are you? Are you a very, mashallah, some people are very enthusiastic. Very strong people, they're energetic. So he goes, this person, you know what? I can misguide them with extreme extra exaggeration. So he's going to say to you, look, you know, London, these kuffar, you need to get on their case, man. You need to bomb their streets. So the person goes, starts looking up stuff like that, and it takes. Another person, he finds that this person is just negligent, is <coughs> struggling to wake up. It is just, just, he's not, he's a lazy person. So what does he do to them? Huh? He makes you go shorter than you are. He makes you a liberal. Huh? He makes you go on Quillin Foundation. Go with those people. So you go to the next extreme on the other spectrum. So, <coughs> so Mamin Qawmi, there is not a people. Well, the Prophet, whenever he, he would ask, Where's Fulan? I haven't seen him these days. Are you there, brothers? Why is so and so not here with us today? You need to ask about the people that you don't see. If you guys have universities and stuff like that and you don't see in the musalla a person and you're in the university and you're, the job of the ISOC and those who are running the universities, their job is to find that person who's not in the masjid. Where is he? I haven't seen him lately. Go to his, his classes. Find out where he is. Okay, are you right? Is everything right? Come with us, man. Why have you forgotten us? You kind of abandoned us. And bring him back to the crowd because if he goes off, he's going to what? He's open for what? He's open for the shayateen and everything. Naam. Ma min qawmi yadhkuruna Allah ta'ala illa hafatum al-malaika wa ghashiyatum al-rahma. So this person loses all of this when they, when they stay away from the jama'ah. Wa nazalat alayhim al-sakina hayat wa dhakarahum Allah fi man indah. Allah mentions them to the angels. Allah says, look at those people who woke up 6 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock in the morning and they left their homes and they drove and they... They're in the UK where haram and shahawat and shubuhat is all open. But they chose to leave their houses. And they chose to come to the masjid and to study an old book written many years ago. They came to study it and they want to learn about it. Allah said, these are my slaves, look at them. Nothing was forcing them. No one had them to a gun state. But they chose to do it. And then the hadith goes on saying what? وَمَنْ بَطَأَ بِهِ عَمَلُهُ لَمْ يُسْرِعْ بِهِ نَسَبُهُ وَمَنْ بَطَأَ بِهِ عَمَلُهُ يَرْحَمُكَ اللَّهُ Anyone whose actions delay him, then the background and the lineage he is from will not put him forward. Look at our youngsters on the street. He wants to get reputation on the street. But the truth of the, truth of the matter is, 
If your actions put you back, the people that you're from or your background or what country you're from or what ethnicity you're from, that ain't going to benefit you. The day of judgment is a day of a'mal, actions. It's a day of what? Actions, hey? Tranquility descends upon them and Allah mentions them to those of his angels who are with him. Imagine Allah mentioning and talking about you. Sah? If a, a person of knowledge, if Sheikh Fawza called you to the how would you feel? Or if you heard in a halaqa that the ulama were talking about you. <gasps> me? Really? Allah Akbar. Sah? Are you with me, brothers? Yeah? Like last night, Sheikh Abdul Haq Turkumani what's up to me. I was like, whoa, Sheikh. I was shocked. Is Sheikh, what's up to me? And he said, I was looking for you now, I was like, Allahu Akbar. You see? But if imagine Allah mentions you in, in the angels and says, Look at my Sheikh, my look at my slave, Fulan. Look at Fulan ibn Fulan. He's talking about me, he's remembering me. Allah tells this to his angels. In another way, he says, Yubahi bihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boasts about you and says, Look at that slave of mine, look how he is. You see? Now. Antiquity classified this hadith as Hassan Sahih. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, also narrates that the Messenger of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, There isn't a group of people who come together in one of the houses of Allah, reciting the Book of Allah. Reciting the Book of Allah. So they come and they read in the Quran together, hey? And studying it among themselves. So re reading the Quran. And they're studying it amongst themselves. So this still falls under these durus and these kutubs. They fall under that because we're studying the books together. Are you? Except that tranquility descends upon them. Wallahi, look at. Are you looking for uh, uh, antidote for what do you call it? Uh, for depression? Do you want a cure for depression? Go to Hila Guddik. Sakina will come on you. Like ask those people who are depressed, when was the last time you actually went to a circle of knowledge where benefit is being given? Sah? And mercy descends upon them and Allah Allah's rahmah comes unto them. وَغَشْيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ Look at it. They're engrossed in Allah's mercy. It's not that they, they receive partial mercy. وَغَشْيَتْهُمْ Do you know what غَشْيَة means? غَشْيَة means this use. وَإِذَا غَشِيَهُ مُوجٌ كَالْضُلَلِ دَعَوُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ دِينَ فَلَمَّا نَجَاهُمْ وَإِذَا غَشِيَهُ مُوجٌ means what? When the water comes to them from every direction and they're about to drown it like <laughs> The rahma engulfs them and it covers them and it fully goes around them It doesn't descend on part of their bodies or part on them, not the other part It fully takes them over Wallahi that's ajeeb Just by coming to the House of Allah and remembering Allah and studying Him. Hey, yeah? The angels encircle them. The angels are around you, just go in circles. Hey, yeah? And Allah the Exalted mentions them to those who are with Him. These angels. angels that are always spoken about, uh, you have to remember, pay attention to this. وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ are the same angels that come based on the hadith of the Prophet. إِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةَ لَا تَدْخُلُ بَيْتًا فِيهِ صُورَةً that the angels do not enter a house where there is a picture. These angels are who? Malaikatul Rahma. They're called Malaikatul Rahma, the angels of mercy. These are the ones that don't come to houses where, there's, where there are pictures. But the angels of the ones who write your righteous deeds, the ones who write your righteous deeds, they are what? They're with you. They don't go whether a picture or not. They're writing deeds here right now. The ones that are leaving you are the mercy ones. These are the ones that will come down for you now. Malaikatul Rahma, eh? Muslim and Abu Dawood narrated this hadith with a chain that is authentic according to the conditions set by Al Bukhari and Muslim. Muawiyah, may Allah be pleased with him, reports that the Messenger of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, came across his companions and they sat in a circle and asked, What causes you to sit here? The Prophet came one day out on his companions. And when he came out, he saw that they were seated in a, a circle. And the Prophet ﷺ said to them, What is it? What made you guys do this? What is making you sit like this? What is it? What's the reason why you're like this? 
They replied, We sat here to make dhikr of Allah, to be exalted, and to praise Him for guiding us to Islam and blessing us with it. Look at this, pay attention to this. The Sahabas were sitting in the masjid. And what were they doing? They said, Nadkurullaha. We were mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we were praising Lima Hadana Lil Islam. And we're praising Him for guiding us to Islam. And that which He had favored us, favored us onto. And what He favored us with. So we're here praising Him for what He has guided us to and the blessings that He has bestowed upon us. And some of the riwayat mentioned that the Prophet said, Allahumma ajlasakum illa hadha. By Allah, nothing else made you sit here. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, nothing else us. We do it come from Allah, the reason just this. And the Prophet said, Allah, again, nothing made you. And then the Prophet told them, I did not swear you by Allah, except that Jibreel came down onto me. Atani Jibreel, فَأَخْبَرَنِي أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى يُبَاهِي بِكُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Except that Jibreel had come down to me, and he had told me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he boasts, to his angels regarding you guys, about regarding your affairs. Ah. The Prophet then said, The angel Jibreel came to me and informed me that Allah, the exalted, boasts of you to his angels. Allah boasts and says to these angels, Look at my slave Fulan ibn Fulan. He is sitting there in the halaqa. This is the same narration that mentions what? The angels, they say, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Allah, Ya Rabbana, our Lord. But there is in the circle a person who didn't intend to come and study here. He wasn't even part of the people, he just was going by. He was just walking by and just sat down for a little bit, he's going to go anyways. Should we write him as well in the circle? Is this all of this going to descend on him? The Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah says, Naam. Yes, he's going to get the reward with them. He's part of the package. He's part of the package. Why? The Prophet says, pay attention to this. لِأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ لَا يَشْقِي جَلِيسُهُمْ Because they are a people. The person who's with them doesn't lose out. This gathering, the one who comes and, and sits with them, he has to get in with them. Because they are a people, the one who is with them does not what? He doesn't lose out. لَا يَشْقِي جَلِيسُهُمْ So that's the benefit of coming to the circles of knowledge. Coming to the masajid and studying and learning.